Coming up we delete dents and scratches, refurbish the headlights and make the original Toledo blue paint amazing again. It looks so fresh. Hello and welcome back to the seventh and final round of the rejuvenation process of Project Rottweil. Over the course of six episodes we sorted out the mechanical side of this battered E39 530i Touring as well as the interior. And now it's time for the exterior. The E39 is still wearing its factory original Toledo blue paint all around which is remarkable for a 20 year old car but the condition of it isn't. Little to no care was put into maintaining the paint over the course of the car's life and we have heavy swirls and deep scratches, the right side was keyed, we have sunscreen fingerprints all over the car and dents, so many dents. On top of that we have a rust spot below the left taillight and the front and rear bumpers are heavily scuffed up and beyond the point of saving and in need of a repaint. But due to time constraints and tight filming schedule I didn't manage to sort that out in this episode but I will at a later date off camera. What we are going to address first is the sea of many dents. Having previously washed the car I am now going around it and circling all of the dents in preparation for painless dent removal aka PDR. Right, every single body panel has a dent, or 15, plus scratches. Look at the amount of dents on the hood. Pretty sure this car has hail damage, even the roof is buggered. The fender, all of the doors. Pretty sure PDR guy and I are going to become best buds after this. He's gonna spend days working on this car. That being said, I did circle even the tiniest dents on the car. That you can barely notice but the most important thing is to remove the big ones one dent on the on the hatch there this side all covered the dents as well and then roof anyway i'm gonna pull the car inside give it a final look and then the pdr guy is stopping by tomorrow morning and he's gonna start working on the car tell you what the toledo blue paint is going to look fantastic once we are done refreshing it it's already shiny and i just washed the car spotted another dent there we go You've seen PDR done before on the channel, but in short, painless dent removal is exactly that. Various tools and techniques are used to carefully massage the body panel and straighten it out. Here, a rod is used to push on the metal on the back of the hood and take out the dent. A wonderful thing, isn't it? This may look straightforward, but it requires a lot of skill and practice to perfect it and make it as if the dent was never there. Amazing. PDR guy just left and this car, ladies and gents, had hail damage. It had so many dents, a lot more than what I initially noted. And the guy worked on this car for three days, not three full days, four or five hours a day because it's super hot now. And he got it to look, well, it already looks 50% better, but as far as the dents go, 99% he got them all out. If you remember a really, really big one here, 
100% gone. And this fender was pushed in and really close to the hood. He managed to fix that gap as well, which is really amazing. The hood is straight as an arrow now. This side was probably the most difficult one, especially the rear door, because someone tried to do some PDR work before, and the upper section there was just really horrible, and he had to correct all of that. And now, I mean, look at that, no dents. And then this side as well, straight as an arrow. And then the roof as well, he fixed all of the dents here. He charged me 670 euros for all of this, which is actually a really good price given the amount of work that he had to do here. And I didn't have to paint anything. You have no idea how much this changes the appearance of the car when you look at it and there's a certain angle and you see that the side is straight, that the hood is straight, that there are no dents. It just looks so much better. So I'm really happy with the results and he does great work. He did Project Chicago and Project Dubai and now Project Rottweil. So with that, ticked off the list, let's move on. Now we're gonna focus on the high glass shadow line window trim, which we need to polish, but there are a few pieces that started to oxidize. For example, this one here, and that looks very ugly. Then another one right over there, and we have two more pieces on the other side. So those trim pieces we are going to replace. Let's remove this one first. It's been a while since I've done this. There you go, three screws, and it pops right out. Nice and easy. Now this one, nice. That was easy as well. On this side, same story. This one is particularly bad. And then we have a tiny bit here. So I'm gonna remove both of them. Now we're gonna polish the window trim. And last time I did this on Alpina, it took me 10 hours to do one side. But on Alpina, the trim had 15 years of Texas sun beating on it. And it was super difficult to cut it. This, I'm hoping is going to be a bit easier. So let's start and see. Gion APC all-purpose cleaner. So much mud here. All right, so I'm using Gion Rotary Heavy Cut Pad and Gion Compound. Just one pass and this is already so much better. Yeah, this is gonna be much easier to cut than on Project Chicago. Surface prep. Now we're gonna do GM polish. Now I'm using DA extension with ultra finishing pad with Gion primer, which is the last step polish. Look at that, beautiful looking trim. And thankfully this one is gonna go much quicker than an Alpina because this one is in much better shape overall. Here's the plan. To speed up this process, I'm going to remove the bottom trim and the top trim because they're really easy to remove. And then I can polish them on the table much quicker and easier. And then the rest I'm going to polish on the car. This one here is super easy to remove. Just pull off this rubber seal. And then we have tabs here that we need to bend inwards. And then this will just come off. There we go. And then it's the exact same procedure with the front one. Yeah, this bottle one can be a pain sometimes, and actually it's always a pain. You know what, I think I'm gonna leave the bottle one in, because this one is always a nightmare to pull out, and then when you go to put it back in, it never wants to sit where it did before. It always starts lifting at the ends. So I'm gonna leave it on the car for now, and then try to polish it. If it's going difficult, then I'm gonna remove it in the end, but for now, leave it there. This is my arsenal. I bought Rupes Dual Action Polisher, Flex Battery Power Polisher, and here you can change extensions and go from rotary to eccentric to dual action to whatever. You can use small and big pads. And then my friends from Gion send me some high quality detailing stuff. We have Compound Plus and Compound. This is for paint correction and removing deep scratches. Then we have Polish and Primer, which is the ultra finishing polish. And then they send me about 158 polishing pads, all of really nice, good quality, more in the back, polish wipe, carbon fiber towels, 
inspection light from Gion, surface prep, and some nice cool bottles that make me look like I'm a professional, even though I'm not. I did say I'm not going to polish a car again because it takes absolutely forever, and I'm gonna have to go back on my word because it's middle of the summer, I'm super busy, I'm traveling in July, and I'm trying to finish this car before I leave, so I'm just gonna have to suck it up and make this car pretty again all by myself. And this one is done. That was a million times quicker than an Alpina. So I can do just two to three passes and it's gonna look you know, perfect. Deep, deep scratches I can't remove, but I don't wanna push it too hard and burn through the, whatever this paint is. So we're just getting it to about 90, 95% perfect. Cause this is a used trim, it's never gonna be perfect. Now I'm gonna polish the trim that I removed from the car. Big, big difference. Now we're gonna put back the trim. The one goes there. You go there. It's back in. Push back the tabs. Replacement one. My neighbors decided to play loud music. Very good. It's not even good. Beautiful. They changed the music. Now it's at least better. The bottom trim piece, that is a brand new original part. This one here isn't. I wanted to buy that new as well, but it's discontinued. NLA no longer available, so I had to settle for a used one. And it was rather tricky to find one that wasn't oxidized as well. And this is the best I could find. This one has a very tiny spot right over there, but it's a lot better than the old one and I couldn't find anything better. But look at the rest of the trim. I finished this side completely and the difference is huge. Looks beautiful. Took me about four to five hours, I wanna say. I did have to run out and do something in the middle of the day, but yeah. Quite happy with the progress. We have more trim here than on Alpina. All right, on to the next side. There you have it. The trim looks spiffy, it really pops now. Took about four and a half, five hours again. Took my time with it. This trim and that trim, brand new. The rest I polished. Now I'm gonna flip the car around and then we'll continue. Before we start polishing the car, we need to touch up some areas of the paint. As it is 20 year old original paint, we have a lot of rock chips in the hood where the metal is exposed. It is important to address these as if left untreated, it can turn into a big rust spot. An example of that you can see here on the side skirt below the rear left door. This now needs a full treatment and respray. This is what we're going to use to touch up the rock chips. First, I'm using a fiberglass scratch pen to remove the surface rust. then alcohol to clean the surface. And I've mixed a bit of paint together with a clear coat. And now with just a small plastic tip, I'm dropping the paint into the chipped area. I'll be repeating this process on the entire car wherever I find a paint chip or a deep scratch that exposed metal. So many rock chips. 
And this is the worst scratch on the entire car as it is wide and went down to the metal. I'm touching it up for now and after 48 hours I'll wet sand it and polish it to make it less visible. I'm gonna remove the kidney grills as they are broken. I have new ones. And I'm also going to remove the windshield washer nozzles. These nozzles are heated, which means they are a fire hazard. I think I'm gonna leave that disconnected. One removed. And that's the second nozzle removed. Now, before we start polishing the car, we need to clay bar the paint. You see, it's a bit rough. Clay bar and clay lube. This is a very important step and if not done, the dirt that you see here will clog up the polishing pad so it won't cut as well and we need to blow out the pad constantly. Here I decided to do a quick ghetto fix to try and hide this rough spot on the bumper. I know this is a crap repair, but the whole bumper will be repainted at a later stage and for now I just wanted to make it visually better and not as noticeable. My landlord jumped in and helped me as he has more experience with painting. All right, gonna let that dry and then a couple of days later, I'm gonna wet sand this and polish it. It looks better than before and that was the whole goal. Right, now I'm gonna do one test spot here. I'm not gonna be able to do what Eve did on Alpina and remove every single scratch. Here we go. Beautiful before and after. Ton of swirls and scratches here, and here's the paint corrected surface. And this is just the first step, paint correction, after that comes the second step where we use the polish and then we use the ultra fine polish, which is the primer from Gion, which is gonna give us the nice, deep, high gloss finish. I started off with the dual action polisher, but ultimately I was not happy with the results. It was cutting very slowly and not removing deeper scratches, so I ditched it and went for a rotary polisher instead. And I applied everything that I learned from Eve and Gian from our detailing session with Alpina. With a rotary, removing swirls and scratches was much easier and faster. It would take me 10 separate passes with a DA to achieve what I can do with a rotary in 3 passes. That said, the rotary creates a lot more heat and it is very easy to burn through the clear coat, so I took my time with it. So my recipe for the first step was Gion Compound Plus, which provides extended cutting power with a rotary and a wool cutting pad, and then smaller flex polisher with a rotary extension and heavy cutting foam pad for tighter and smaller areas. After you are done polishing a certain area or the whole panel, it is important to use something like Gion Surface Prep to degrease the surface and remove the polishing compound that's filling in and hiding scratches, as this will give us a true result and how the paint looks like after correction. The second step is Gion Polish with a medium polishing pad on a DA. This will remove wool marks and haziness that we got in the first step with a rotary.
and the third and final step, Geon Primer with a finishing pad. The hood is done, and just look at this finish. It looks beautiful. Beautiful, nice mirror finish. Absolutely thrilled with the results. I mean, we can walk all day long around the hood with inspection light, and it looks stunning. It's coming out a bit grayish on the camera, which I'm not sure why. In person, it's, it's beautiful, deep blue color. You might be able to notice like dots or pins in the finish. These are not solvent pops, but they are very tiny sandblasted spots from the age and use of the car, and they cannot be removed with paint correction. But they are only barely noticeable under certain angles and lighting, and doesn't really affect the overall finish. The roof is finally done. This took forever because it is a touring and there's so much property to polish here, but it turned out really, really good. The roof had a lot of deep scratches all over the place and I managed to remove about 95, maybe 96% of them and look at that finish.
At this point I got so comfortable with the rotary that I went back to the hood to cut and remove some deeper scratches that were bugging me. Brand new emblem. Tailgate is done. <laughs> it looks so good. Even though the bumpers will be repainted, I went over them as well to make them shiny and match with the rest of the car. I also polished all of the trim that I previously removed. These two trim pieces from the bumper were badly scuffed up so I had my neighbor repaint them. I finished polishing the car late last night and then I had to wash it to get all of the polishing compound and dust off. For that I used the Gion Restart Wash which actually works really well because it also decontaminates the paint and now we have so to speak naked paint on which we can apply ceramic coating. I started polishing the window trim on Wednesday. Today is Thursday morning. The following week. Seven days. I've been at this for seven days. 12 hours a day on my feet with the polisher going absolutely mental. Could have rebuilt the engine on E31 three times. Could have dropped the donor engine from the N3 six times in that time frame. But no, here I am making paint perfect on a daily driver. And this is the problem with detailing and paint correction and polishing, at least for me. My mindset was, this is a daily driver. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just going to do a couple of passes, make it nice and shiny and call it a day. Well, that clearly didn't happen. Once I had the power in my hands with a rotor and wool to cut most of the scratches out, I just went to town. I just, I couldn't stop. I couldn't leave it alone. You know, I can't just get it to a certain level and just say, yeah, that's good enough. So with wool, on this car, this is original paint, so old, hard, clear coat. With wool, three passes, you're gonna get about 80% of the scratches off. But the really deep ones, you have to work them. You have to be patient and concentrate on one single spot to get all of them out. I mean, most of them out. I mean, the car was skied, for crying out loud, on both sides. And now those scratches are gone. You can't see them. Uh, this is just how it goes. It just takes time. It took me a whole day just to do the roof. I mean, look, look how big this car is. It just takes time. Yes, you can polish the car in two days, but it's not going to look as good as this. And uh, yeah, I just went slightly overboard like with everything on this car and just made the daily driver in perfect to nearly showroom condition. I believe I got the paint to about 97%, at least as far as the scratches are concerned. I didn't want to cut too deep because as I said, the paint is original and I don't want to thin out the clear coat, but I did want to remove most of the scratches. So I'm super, super happy how it turned out. My body, it's in real pain. Everything absolutely hurts. So now we're going to Prep the surface, ceramic coat it, and then I'm gonna go home and drink beer. All right, the rest we need to dust off the paint.
This is what we'll be using to protect the car. Gion Evo Pure Ceramic Coating comes with the applicator pad. But before that, we need to use surface prep to prep the surface and some premium carbon fiber towels. Two towels. I surface prepped the entire car. Now we're gonna start applying ceramic coating. So I'm gonna glove up and mask up. Once we applied 10 to 30 seconds, you need to wipe it off immediately. It's pretty hot now, so I can start wiping almost instantly. And that's how that works. It's pretty simple. Once I'm done ceramic coating the car, I like to kill all of the lights in the shop. Take the inspection light and just go around the car and make sure I wiped off the ceramic coating properly because if you only partially buffed it out and there's a little bit of that haziness left, that's gonna look like holograms once it fully cures and that's not nice. And once it fully cures, the only way to remove it is to polish that spot and reapply ceramic coating. But right now, while it's still not fully cure, you can just apply a bit more ceramic coating and buff it out, but quite happy with all of this. And I already checked the other side, so we are good to go. The roof rails, we are going to use trim ceramic coating from Gion to spruce them up a bit. Right, this should give it somewhat nice matte finish. Yeah, make it look fresh. So we're gonna let that cure and then I'm gonna do another coat later. Tire Express. Now I don't like it when it's this shiny, so we're gonna buff it out. I like it when it's on the matte side. Now I'm gonna repeat the same process with the rest of the wheels. Now I'm gonna clean the glass with Gion Clearview. I'm not gonna spray on the car. Then we have Quick View, which is water repellent. So I'm gonna coat all of the glass with this. Then it needs to sit for five minutes and then we're gonna wipe it off with a damp towel. Very nice. Damp, carbonious, get that. Comes right off. Brand new original normal size kidney grills, which I'm going to ceramic coat first and then put them on the car. This upper seal on the driver's door is torn. That's been driving me nuts ever since I got the car and I wanted to buy a brand new one. It's only 40 euro. Unfortunately, it's discontinued. NLA, no longer available, no longer produced. So I had to settle for a used one, which was actually quite tricky to find, but I managed to find one in good condition for 25 euro shipped. So let's quickly swap that out. I wanted to do this when we polished the window trim, but I didn't have it back then. Okay. Well, that is out. Fully expect this to be an absolute pain to get in. In you go. Fixed. Now that's better. A daily driver. Right. More like a show car. It is ridiculous how clean this car is now. And take a good proper look. As soon as it goes out through that door, the real world is going to hit it. Dust, dirt, scratches, all of that good stuff. But there is one more thing that we need to do before we head out. That. Time to refurbish the headlights. 
for 8 mil screws. We are going to refurbish the headlights and update the projectors. In the past I've always used Evo XR 2.0 projectors, which is what I have on my E39 M5 and they are great projectors. But after talking to Sweetlip they suggested these. LZ7 aka G5 projectors as a better alternative. The main difference is that EVO XR 2.0 is very hot spotted and has a narrow center focused light output, while LZ7 has a wider hotspot and therefore wider light output, so it covers the surrounding ground much better. The second difference is that unless modified, EVO XR 2.0 doesn't sit close to the shroud inside of the headlight and leaves a big ugly gap while LZ7 sits flush same as the stock projectors without the need to modify the shroud studs. LZ7 is also a newer projector and while both of them have an aluminum bowl, David from Switlib has been testing or in his own words torturing both of these projectors in his shop, playing with different temperatures and LZ7 showed to be far more durable, whereas reflecting surface degrades on EVO XR 2.0. With all of that in mind and given that I've been happy with EVO XR 2.0 for 6 years on my E39 M5, I was excited to try out the newer projectors. First remove this trim here. Now remove the xenon ballast. I'm gonna give it a quick clean. Actually, should have removed this as well. Now I'm gonna blow this out with compressed air. Now you're gonna remove the bulbs. By the way, you can tell that this headlight has broken adjusters. Shouldn't do that. The production date of that E39 is December of 2002, which means that this headlight is permanently sealed. Hella, the original manufacturer of these headlights for BMW, in mid-2002, they changed the way this headlight is put together. Basically, everything before that date, they used butyl, and you can use a heat gun, you can bake it in the oven for 10 minutes, and the headlight cover or the lens is just going to pop off super easily. But after that date, they decided this headlight needs to be permanently sealed, and they used some really strong sealant. It looks like windshield sealant to me. So you can heat this up until tomorrow. It's not going to soften up and you can't remove this cover easily. For me, the only way to do it and for most people is to simply cut this thing open and that's what we're going to do. This cover, it's pretty short as you can see. I personally don't like polishing headlights like ever because you can polish it for three days. It's still not going to look like a brand new headlight or brand new cover. So whenever there's an option to buy a brand new cover, that's my way to do it. And I have brand new cover sitting in the box right over there. First, I'm gonna start slicing here, far away from the black trim inside. Then I'm gonna remove this cover and then I can pry up this plastic and cut near the edge. And be careful not to go too deep because if you go too deep, you're gonna cut through the black trim inside. I'm gonna put a respirator because this plastic smells like crap. Protective googless, hearing protection as well. And let's start cutting. Now my goal is to first remove this black trim inside, but it has plastic tabs here, here, I think two on the bottom and one here, and they are also <laughs> sealed in place with that sealant. So you have to be careful not to break them all the way when you pull them out. They are going to break, which it doesn't matter as long as you have a bit longer of it left. You can still use butyl and this is going to stay in place but this is old brittle plastic. So in any case, you have to be super careful with all of this. See, now I can flex this up and then I can also use, for example, and start cutting the thing and then twist with the pliers. You know, it's, it's a long process, this. Anyway, I'm gonna start cutting again on the bottom. So this is what I'm talking about. Don't go too deep where you cut through this black trim.
Now I'm going to start cutting through the sealant and try to extract the tabs that hold the black trim in place without breaking them too much. There we go. Careful. These are the tabs. One, two, and three on the bottom. Now it's much easier because we are not going to damage that bit there. Now we can extract this. Now we can remove the motor for the headlight leveling. Be very careful how you grab and handle projector housing and the reflecting surface here. It's very easy to, to take this reflecting surface off and then and you need a new one, well, replacement one. So don't touch it, don't rub it with anything, just put it on the side. Blinker reflecting surface. Now there are two screws here that we need to remove. This is for the lens. I'm gonna finish removing the rest of the cover tomorrow. It's pretty late right now. It's dark outside, so it's perfect time to play with the projector. I want to install the new projector, put it in the housing, put it on the car and take it outside and just make sure that the cutoff line from the projector is aligned. It's parallel with each other and if I need to adjust it, I can do that. During the day, I can't do that because I need darkness. E39 headlights have two main issues. The first one is always broken adjusters due to age. These are very brittle and break. The second one is worn out projector. The reflecting surface inside is yeah, it's crap. So we are going to replace the adjusters and the projectors. Now we're going to remove the projector. While I'm here, I want to point out something. Here you can see how the projector needs to sit. It's very close to the shroud. And if you put Evo XR, if you just bolt it in, it's not gonna sit that flush. It's gonna have a small gap there. And you need to change these studs here and use some spacers to get it to align properly with the shroud. But the projector that we're using doesn't have that issue. But we'll have to do some modifying to the projector to make it fit here. Save the red spacers. You can put the shroud on the side. I don't know how much you can see in there, but the reflecting surface is it's pitted and it's not looking good. When I did this for the first time on my original E39, the surface inside was completely burnt. Our new beautiful projector, and this one has metal housing. This is the supplied bracket with the projector, and this lines up exactly with the studs on the shroud, like that. So we need to mount this bracket on the projector first. And we need to drill the holes here and tap the threads and then use supplied screws to secure it in place. And then we'll drill an additional hole on the bottom here as an extra securing point. So break out the drills. Gonna start drilling with a three mil bit first. And now three and a half mil. M4 tap, it fits right into this four mil socket. Beautiful. Now we can mount the bracket. Now I can drill one more hole here. screw and a nut. That's the bracket installed. Now when we try to mount the projector, the upper holes line up just fine, but on the bottom we need to trim off this part of the projector here because it's in the way of this stud going through and mounting on the bracket. So I'm gonna mark that with a marker. This is how much we need to trim off here and here in order for the stud to clear and go through this hole on the bracket. Fire up the Dremel again. Start cutting. First, I'm gonna use some tape to tape off the inner section of the projector. Yeah. 
this is what we ended up with. Just a bit of trimming there. And now you can see that it clears the washer and this stunt bolt. And look how it sits, exactly like the original one. There's no gap in between the shroud and the projector. Nice. This is a better projector than every XR and this is actually not that difficult to, you know, to trim this off. It's rather easy. Now we are going to put the little bushings here because all I want to do now is bolt the projector directly to the shroud, put it on the car and see the cutoff line. And then if we need to adjust it, then I'm going to expand these holes here and that way I can rotate the projector. And once I get it exactly to where it needs to be, then I can just tighten them up and that's it. That's easier said than done because once you put this in and then in the headlight housing, you can't access the nuts on the back. It's gonna be a bit tricky. Good. And you can see we have very nice clearance there, Clarence. Next up, the bulbs. Osram night breakers. You need to trim off this little tab here. High beams. Now the broken adjusters. That's what's left of it. Actually, there's another piece. Here are the new ones. I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is to adjust the headlight position up and down and left and right. So very important. I'm gonna blow this out with compressed air. This wire here, we're not going to be using, so I can just zip tie it. Now oh, these brackets or thingies for the adjusters. We need to extract the old one. Leftovers from the old adjuster. I can put this back in place. Clip it into place. Now this motor for the self-leveling. Make sure you clip that in as well. Now we can go and test this. And we have light. Very good. I did the same thing off camera with the right headlight and now we're gonna go outside and see the cutoff line. You can probably quite clearly tell that we definitely need to adjust the projectors because they're completely out of line. The projector is removed now and now we need to expand the holes on the bracket and that way we can rotate the projector and align them properly. Move the bulb. I'm gonna use six and a half millimeters drill bit to expand the holes. So now when we put the projector on the shroud, we have the ability to rotate the projector and align it. I don't know how this is gonna work though because you can't access the nuts on the back once you put the shroud back in the headlight housing. So I'm not really sure. And even if I leave the nuts slightly loose so I can turn it, I can't access it. Might need to figure out something else. I don't know. Let's try this first and then take it from there. So I'm gonna eyeball it for now because I don't know what else to do. Now we're gonna add washers. I'm gonna put all of this together and then test it. If that doesn't work, then I need to find a way to power up the bulbs outside of the car, which shouldn't be a big deal. I just need 12 volts. The biggest problem that I have is I don't have, where do I do it? I don't have room to do something like that because I need a nice white wall and long distance as well. Don't have that. Look at this. It's actually pretty spot on. I just eyeballed it and they are perfectly aligned. That being said, I do need to move the bulb lower a little bit because of the hot spot. It's not where it's supposed to be. And David from Sweet Lip 
told me about this. So I'm gonna go back inside and do that. But as far as the alignment of projectors, I think it's, it's pretty spot on. First, you're gonna solder in the high beam splitters, which I actually forgot to order. So I had to go and steal these from my E39M5, because that car has Evo XR projectors. That way we can test the hotspot of the bulb and see if that is aligned properly as well. This is the thing, all of this you have to check before you put the headlight back together, because once it's back together, it's too late to do anything about it. Right, do the same with the other one. All right, now we're gonna raise or lower the hotspot of the bulb, one of the two. So David told me to get aluminum tape, four slices here, which will, well, lower the hotspot. And I forgot the reason for this. Something to do with the projector and the bulb, obviously. So this is all we need to do. Four slices of tape right over there. Let's put back the bulb. And now uh, the high beam splitter. Plumb that in. All right, gonna put it back on the car and then let's see. Success, perfectly aligned projectors. See that? And then when I hit the high beams, we have the bi-xenon function working correctly. All right, it's actually two in the morning and I'm gonna call it a night and we're gonna reassemble the headlights in the morning. See you manana. Good morning and welcome back. We're going to continue with the headlight housing and remove whatever's left of the old cover. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm gonna cut along the edge through the sealant and then I'm gonna start pulling on the on the plastic and once you get it going at least one part it's a bit easier because you can just cut all around and then just pull it out so be sure to wear eye protection this plastic is going to be flying everywhere There it is. The housing did start to crack here a bit. No worries, I can use Speedy Fix to fix it. And this is the stuff that, I'm, that I was talking about. This is like windshield sealant. You can't melt this. And now it's the most boring part of this entire project, scraping the old sealant out. For this, I'm using blades and combination of various screwdrivers. And um, yeah, this is gonna take a very long time, but you need to clean this channel thoroughly in order for the butyl to seal. Right, the majority of sealant is removed. Now we're going to use Victor Ryan's Remove, which is sealant remover, gasket remover. So I'm just gonna spray it into the channel. Let it sit for a minute, and this is gonna dissolve the small, well, whatever small stuff is still left in there. That's clean. I'm gonna glue back this piece here. Speedy fix. And you can see how nice and clean the channel is. It's reassembly time, but first I gotta very carefully attempt to clean this. So dry carbon fiber, don't rub. Right, blow this out with compressed air. It's nice and clean and we are ready to reinstall it. These are my favorite headlights to retrofit with good projectors, by the way. They're very simple headlights. Much easier than, say, E70X5 headlights. Easier to remove, easier to open, if you get the ones before 2002. So, to seal this headlight, we are going to use butyl. I have nice, thick butyl here, 
and I'm gonna start laying all around and in some spots I'm gonna put extra like where these tabs go in. We have a bit bigger hole there so I'm gonna put a bit extra on those spots. And I think here as well the channel is quite deep. And as this is sticky, a nice trick is to use water and just wet your hands and then it's not gonna stick to your fingers. I'm going to add a thinner one here. Have to make sure that the channel is full, otherwise it won't seal properly. Now I'm going to use a heat gun, go over butyl maybe 20 times, get it really soft and tacky. Then we're going to install the black trim with angel eyes and then the brand new cover. Gonna blow this out with compressed air. Do the same with the cover. Bit more butyl here. So a lot of people here like to install aftermarket angel eyes, halo rings. I don't like to do that because as soon as you do that, to me that completely ruins the headlight because you can immediately tell that it's off the market, it looks ugly, and most importantly, it's far too bright. It just shines so much, it looks unnatural. So me personally, I always keep original angel eyes. Now we're gonna heat it up some more and then install the cover. Blow it out with compressed air for the final time. Grab the new cover, which I'm also going to blow out with compressed air. Simply push it on. Make sure it clips all around. And then we have two screws here, but don't over tighten these. Well, you can break the plastic inside rather easily. So just feel it pushing the cover in. Nice and easy. Brand new headlight cover installed. I just remembered I forgot something. I f forgot to put the reflecting surface for the blinker. Don't forget this. Okay. That clipped all around. Now we can do the two screws. Turn signal bulb. We are going with clear ones or chrome. Don't touch it with your bare hands. Clean rubber boot. High beam splitter. Bulbs for the angel eyes. I prefer white ones or LED ones on E39. And these are actually pretty good quality. I got them on eBay. These are called Citronic. I think 35 euros, something like that, for two of them. And this is what I'm running on my other E39 and Project Chicago as well. That's the only thing that I don't like the original headlight, it's the yellow angel eyes. Ballast. Now the rubber boot for the main projector, we have to modify it slightly in order to fit. So essentially we have to cut, cut this section off and then it'll fit, which is irrelevant point of the boot here, because this is for the old projector. This doesn't serve any purpose on the new projector. So we can just chop it off. This trim piece on the bottom, which I thoroughly cleaned and polished as well, a bit. And finally, brand new trim piece on the top, or this is some sort of weather stripping. Wipe it down and the headlight is done. Look at that. Better than brand new original Hella headlight. Why? Because the projector is much, much better, much more durable because of the metal housing 
And I also learned that brand new Hella headlights, the cover, it's made from recycled plastic. So it pits like crazy. Remember the brand new headlight on the E60 M5 Project Rally? I paid 1,200 euros for those. After two years of driving on the Autobahn, they are sandblasted completely. Not that this is any better quality, this is just a cheap cover from eBay, paid 100 euros for both of them. So I'm going to put PPF on them. Yes, it's illegal to do that in Germany, but otherwise this is just gonna look like crap after one year of driving on the Autobahn. I regret not doing that on Project Rally. I'm not gonna show you that, but I will be doing that. A spot of cleaning is needed. I'll need to polish the bumper again. So I made a few scratches when I was removing and installing the headlight. Gotta be careful with this tab here, not to break it. Doesn't that look a million times better? Time to test them. Angelize, confirmed, confirmed. And a high beam. Excellent. Everything is working perfectly fine. This is one of my favorite mods on E39, the headlights. I love driving at night and having good headlights. It just has to have that. I did have to adjust the hotspot further by adding more aluminium tape, which worked a treat, and this is how it looks fully dialed in. Also you can see that the cutoff line curves out or bows out on the sides. This is normal for these projectors due to the design of the shield in order not to blind the oncoming traffic. I'm not sure if this is coming out on the camera properly, I'm using same settings as before, but the difference in person, it's literally night and day. The new projectors are so much more superior than the old ones. And the high beams. The headlights are spectacular now, ready for night driving. Look, I knew that this car would clean up, but we're in a situation where I need a daily for my daily for my daily. You know what I mean? It's far too nice now. I mean, just look at this thing. It looks incredible. Look at the paint, look at the headlights, at the wheels, the window trim, the glass, all of it. And as always, the biggest issue, keeping dust off of it. That's dust. <sighs> look how shiny it is. Ignore the rust, that will be fixed promptly, but I can't believe how well this car cleaned up. It looks so fresh. All right, cue the music.
It sure is pretty. I just spent hours going through the invoices and adding up the total cost of this project and it's a lot more than one would expect. But bear in mind that this was sorta a no cost build. I could have done a lot of things cheaper and skipped the mods and upgrades that I did but E39 was my first car, it's one of my favorite platforms and this is something I always wanted to do. Properly restored from top to bottom all at once with original and OE parts with subtle upgrades while maintaining the stock look and just create a perfect daily driver. And to that end we come to 17,882 euros and 99 cents. That's a, <laughs> that's a lot of dinero. And while this doesn't make financial sense, I did what I did and I do what I do out of my love for these cars and I know that this fine specimen is going to be trouble free and solid as a rock for the years to come. Cheers. Another neglected BMW saved. I presented this car to you at this very spot about four months ago and I think we can all agree that it looked pretty awful in every single way, outside, inside, mechanically. And as soon as I laid my eyes onto this fine automobile at that dealership lot, I knew it had potential, that the bones were good. I mean, look at this paint. It looked terrible before and now the car is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Took a lot of time, effort and money, of course, but we saved a glorious example of the 5 Series Touring. This is my favorite generation of the 5 Series, probably my favorite model overall. And uh, I'm pretty happy of what we achieved here. This pretty much concludes the rejuvenation or restoration process of this, of this car. We ticked off three big items. I always start with the mechanical stuff, then interior and finally exterior. So that's sort of the final episode on that. We are going to have one more episode in the near future, probably in August, where we're going to bolt Infinita supercharger to this engine and make this car a bit faster and more powerful. Anywho, thank you so much for your support, for following along, for liking, subscribing, commenting, to all of my Patreons. Thank you so much. Without you, this, this wouldn't be possible. So you should be proud of this car as much as I am. Gonna finish my beer and I'll see you in the next one. <sighs> Beautiful. Even the bumpers cleaned up and they looked horrible.